Hello guys, this is the PPT guy. Welcome to the second chapter of my free PowerPoint course. This chapter focuses on the foundation of a PowerPoint design which is master slide. This chapter focuses on topics that are basic to creating a presentation. The following topics will be discussed in detail in this tutorial. We'll get to know in detail about changing the dimensions of the presentation slide and understand more about the need for a master slide and how to modify it. Design and background form the theme of any presentation, which we will learn to format. Text is key to any document and so is a PowerPoint design. Formatting it into different designs becomes a key to a good design which will be taught in detail in this chapter. We will study in detail how to create a layout in the master slide and understand some key and basic functions in PowerPoint like elements grouping and alignments which will make the movement of elements easy. PowerPoint provides multiple presentation views which serve different purposes, which we will get to know more about towards the end of the chapter. The last topic of this chapter will be different file formats available in PowerPoint and how to convert a PPT design to different. So, without much ado, let's head to our first topic which is different slide sizes. The size of a PowerPoint slide is by default 16 to 9. However, the sizes are not limited to these dimensions. There is an option to change the dimensions of the slide to your wish. To change the dimension, click on the Design tab and you'll see a slide size option on the right. Click on the drop-down to find the two most commonly used dimensions. They are standard, 4 to 3, and widescreen, 16 to 9. If you want a custom shape, click on Custom Slide Size. You will get a wide options to change the dimensions here. There are also some predefined dimension standards like A4, A3, B3, B4, Letter, Ledger, and more. If you want more custom size, click on Custom and enter the height and width you need. You can also change the slide orientation to a portrait or a landscape. Now that you know how to change the slide size, we'll move on to learn about the master slide. Let us learn how to open the master slide window. There are two ways to open the master slide. The first option is to locate the slide master in the ribbon. You can find it listed under the view tab. The second option is the search bar, type in slide master view, you will get the option. Let's open the slide master view. A master slide is a key slide that stores information about a presentation's theme and layout as a default setting. Some of the common settings include background, color, font, effects, placeholder sizes, and element positioning. This is what the slide master view looks like, kind of like a blueprint or a layout. The first slide layout is the key here. Any change that happens in the first slide will reflect in all the slide layouts. Let us try a couple of changes. We will change the font of the heading. See, the changes are reflected in all slides in the slide master. We will add an image, a logo in particular. If you have seen corporate presentations, a logo will be placed in the corner of every slide. Placing it manually on each slide is time-consuming and cannot be accurate always. With Slide Master, you can make it as easy as it can be. Just select an image and place it in a corner. It will appear on all slides. You also have the option to select fonts as your default in the presentation. Let's try it. Under the Slide Master tab, click on Fonts. At the bottom, you can see the Customize Fonts option. Two fonts are set as default in Slide Master. One is the heading and the second is the body. We'll change the body font to elephant and save it. Now, whenever you insert a text in your slides, it will be by default elephant font. Using Slide Master, you can even change the default color palette for your presentation. Slide Master is used to create a theme for the presentation which reflects throughout. This option comes in handy when you need to adhere to brand guidelines. Our next topic is background formatting. Right-click on a slide and select Format Background, a set of options appears on the right task pane. By default, the background color will be white. If you insist on using a plain, single color, click on Color and you will see a wide range of colors. 
If you want to inherit a color from some elements already on the slide, use the eyedropper feature and just click on the color of your choice, the background will change. If you want to change the background color using a color code, click on more colors, select custom and enter the color code. If you need a gradient background for your slide, select the gradient fill option. This option gives multiple features to explore such as gradient type, direction of the color paths, and angle of the color path. You can add or delete a gradient stop as well, and move them to change the outlook. The next background fill option is a picture of texture fill. When you use this feature, a plain default background will take over. If you want to replace this texture, keep an image copied in the clipboard and click on the clipboard button. The image will replace the texture and become the background. The last option to format the background is Pattern Fill. There are multiple patterns available to choose from. The limitation is no external pattern can be updated as a background. The next topic is Text Formatting, a simple and important one in PowerPoint. There are multiple design options available for text in PowerPoint. Apart from basic options like color, outline, and font sizes, there is an extensive range of design features. The options are shadow, reflection, glow, bevel, 3D rotation, and 3D transform options. There are also word art styles which are predefined text formatting options. You can also use the option to update the background of the text placeholder. Features are similar to the ones you use directly on the text, but here, you will use the same on the placeholder. Now that we have understood the background and text formatting options, we will create a layout in the Slide Master. You already know how to open the Slide Master. Let's add an empty layout. This is what the empty layout appears like. Only a few options appear, and we can add as many placeholders as we want. To add a placeholder of your choice, under the Slide Master tab, select Insert Placeholder. Multiple elements are available here such as content, text, pictures, charts, tables, smart art, and media. Let's insert an image placeholder and place it on the left part of the slide. Next, we'll add a text on the right side. We'll add another one on the right, let us select a smart art and place it below the text. We shall change the font of the text and heading as well. Let's see how it appears in the main presentation work area. Right click on a slide and select the layout option and you can find your custom slide here, click on it. When you click on the left placeholder, it will automatically be considered to be reserved for an image and provide the option to insert one. On clicking the text, you can just start typing on your keyboard. And, on clicking on Smart Art, you get the option to choose from the chart options. This is how the layouts work in a master slide. I hope I have been able to convey the functions of a master slide in a better way. Next, we'll hop on to learn about element grouping in a PowerPoint slide. The grouping feature allows you to rotate, flip, move, or resize all objects at the same time as though they are a single object or a shape. If you see this first slide, there are five images which I need to move a little towards the top. Let me try it one by one. It is difficult and is not aligned as earlier. I'll group all of them and move. See, all images moved up and each one of them is in sync as earlier. Let us take another example with multiple shapes. I have already inserted multiple round corner rectangles. I need to resize them as this looks bulkier. I need to reduce the size of each rectangle one by one which is heavily time consuming. With the group feature, it can be done with just a few clicks. So, we'll group all of them and reduce the size of the shape by just holding the mouse click. See, all the shapes have proportionally reduced in size. To better understand the wider use of the grouping feature, let's insert a couple of icons. I have taken a balloon and a bar chart. Right click on the balloon and click on ungroup. See, the icon is made of different shapes grouped. 
The case is the same with the bar chart as well. Once we ungroup, all shapes become independent and can be moved as we wish. Next, we'll learn about the element alignment feature in PowerPoint. Moving objects around the slides is tough, especially if you are using a laptop mouse. Alignment is not just dependent on the slide, but also on other objects or elements. So, to ease this complexity, the Align feature comes in handy. There are two options in Align, that is Align to Slide and Align Selected Objects. First, we'll learn alignment with the slide. When this option is selected, the position of the objects aligns with the slide. I have a rectangle here, which will move without using the mouse clicks. If we want to place it at the exact center of the slide, first click on Align Center and then click on Align Middle. If we want to send it to the top left corner, click on Align Left and then on Align Top. If we want to send it to the bottom center, click on Align Center and then on Align Bottom. Next, we'll learn about aligning selected objects. For the Align Selected Objects option to activate, you need to select at least two objects. Otherwise, it'll be aligned to slide by default. First, we'll align the square and rectangle at the top. Select both of them and click on Align Top. They'll get aligned to the topmost position of either of the objects. If you click Align Bottom, it'll align to the bottom position. We'll work on the four squares below. Select all of them and click on Align Middle. All squares are in line. We have an interesting distribution feature. If you see, the gaps between the squares are unequal. If we click on Distribute Horizontally, the gaps also become equal. Next, we'll learn about different presentation views available in PowerPoint. You need some additional assistance during the presentation, right? I have created a presentation sample to understand different views easily. There are multiple views in PowerPoint namely, Normal View, Outline View, Slide Sorter View, Notes Page View, Reader View, and Presenter View, which we'll learn one by one. The normal view is what you see by default when you open the PowerPoint software. What you are seeing now is the normal view. The next one is the outline view, which will help you easily locate a slide using its heading and main title. The outline view usually appears in the thumbnail pane. You can see the titles here and just jump to whichever slide you want just by glancing at the slide titles. The next one is the slide sorter view. As the name says, you can easily sort your slides using this view. Sorting your slides in the thumbnail pane is hard, especially when there are a lot of slides. See here, the slides can be moved easily everywhere. Next is the notes page view. Using this view, you can print your slides along with the notes for study purposes or just use them as cues for yourself while presenting to your audience. Reader view, as the name says helps you to read. You will get a bigger screen for each slide without any tools. It will help you proofread your content. Presenter view helps the presenter with a different view when you are presenting. To open presenter view, start the presentation and right-click, select presenter view. See, this view is called the presenter view. This helps when you are using a projector or secondary monitor to present. This view will not be visible to your audience, only the main presentation will be displayed. You have a timer option where you can keep track of how long you are presenting and the notes to each slide will be displayed here. If you forget anything, you can read it out from the notes. We have come to the last topic of our second chapter, which is converting a PowerPoint file into different formats. It is easy to convert the PPT file into different formats. Click on Save as under the File tab and select where you want the file location. Before you click on Save, click on the Save as Type drop-down above. You can see a lot of file formats here including MP4 video format, PDF, JPG, PNG, and a lot of other formats including a Microsoft PowerPoint template format.
This brings us to the end of our Chapter 2, Master Slides. In this chapter, we started with understanding how to change the size of the presentation slide. Then, we got to understand the master slide, how to modify it and when it can be put into use. We learned about formatting slide backgrounds using colors, gradients, patterns, and images. Then, we understood in detail about different options available for formatting text elements. We created a layout in Slide Master using different elements available in PowerPoint such as graphs, media, smart arts, text, tables, etc. Next, we got to know about grouping and alignment of objects in PowerPoint. Then, we understood different presentation views in PowerPoint and how to use them. Finally, we learned how to convert PPT files to different formats using the Save As option. The next chapter in the free PowerPoint course is about shapes where you will be learning about how to merge shapes and creating custom shapes using basic ones. You will also learn about creating icons in PowerPoint in single color and multicolor and exporting them as different files in PNG and SVG format. You will also get to learn how to combine shapes and different media formats and texts. Thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, do not forget to hit like, comment and share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to the PPT guy yet, click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming PowerPoint tutorial videos.